come up with a good costume design. Um, I'm going to do the first part of this as kind of a description of what I think makes good steampunk. And we're going to talk a little bit about prop design, how to find things, and stuff like that. Then we're going to go to a Q&A, more of a round table. want to let uh, people make it in here and give everyone a chance to get in. Um, is everyone from local here to St. Louis? Do we have anybody from out of town? Uh, okay. <laughs> what are you giving me, Mike? I'm not giving it to you. I'm showing it to you. What is this? The scanner. <laughs> what is this for the Secret Saturdays? Yeah. <laughs> That's Toys, awesome. Toys R Us. <laughs> 20 well, bucks. I'm going to so tear this apart. Yeah. Well, not that one. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. Atmosphere. <laughs> 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 you know, they show it on Boomerang now. Oh, do they? Yeah, it's like on at midnight. Okay. It's I'll like right after I'll have to wait till I get done next week. has my favorite villain. Which one? B.V. Argos. Ah, uh, yeah. He's a pretty good villain. Um, alright, so, to get back to the subject at hand, steampunk. Steampunk is a genre that comes out of the 1980s, and it's set more in the 1880s. It's kind of ironic that way. It really caught hold with a number of gaslight novels that came out in comic books, and also with an old game that was called um, Space 1889, I believe, that was set on airships in on Mars, of all things. It was a little-known role-playing game. They had a pretty good, strong subculture, and a lot of books were spawned off of it. Yeah. I'm sorry, I know in California there was a fairly large Regency era historical creation right. society which kind of evolved in steampunk. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And that's why you will find the big steampunk convention on the Queen Anne's now. That's where they got the, the large enough group that they can actually rent out the entire Queen Anne, the sister ship to the Titanic, and use that as a steampunk convention. It's really awesome. It's in port, obviously, because the ship doesn't sail anymore. It just kind of sets there and collects carnivals. But it's still a cool ship. Just great small corridors. Not good for steampunk. It looks cool. Great photo opportunities. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk about with steampunk is that you need to have a good character concept. Um, whenever you are making props, you don't want to just throw things together. There's a very popular song right now called Gruesome Gears on it. If you, and, and that is really one of the things that people that have been doing steampunk don't like seeing, because whenever you just try to put something on to just trip something out, paint it up, glue some gears on it, it doesn't really have that look to it. It, it doesn't look functional. And that is what people that really get into steampunk look for. Uh, and that's what people that are working or that are going to conventions and stuff look for too. And it's a subconscious thing. It's not like a conscious snobby thing. It's the fact that we as human beings that live in the 20th century have been dealing with machines our entire life. We have an idea of how our machine should work and what we think it should do. Let's take a look at a cell phone. Modern day technology, it's a blinking black box. It doesn't have very many things. It's got a touch screen interface. It's got one button up top and a couple ports down here. But this has the basic components of every single thing that is a machine out there. It has an input for power. It has toggles for turning on and off controls. It has an output and a magic box where something happens that we don't quite understand that makes the device work. Every device that you build inside Steampunk should work off these basic principles. If you take a look at this cane that I've made here, whenever I, uh, this was actually the first Steampunk item I ever made. Uh, there was a convention here in town called Conflation that did a steampunk year, and I wanted to come up with something cool. I'm like, well, you know, I like lightsabers, I like Star Wars, I want a steampunk lightsaber. How am I going to do that? I'm not going to tear apart a for force effects saber because I'm poor, and I'm not going to destroy something I really like. So I'm just going to go and look for something that'll work. And I knew that LEDs would broadcast light through uh, plexiglass, so I went looking for plexiglass. I actually found Lexon ballistic plastic, bulletproof glass. And simply mounted 
the little raver toy in here and found basic fittings and did some work and figured out a way to make a plasma ball work on one of these and said that this was a pretty good thing. I called it the photonic acceleration cane saver. But what this really is is an output, a magic box, and a power source. It has that look. It has a flow to it. And anything that you build, you really want to have that basic flow. Power source, magic box, output. And if you have those things, whenever a person looks at the prop, even if it's make-believe, they will mull it over in their mind and try to figure out how it works. And if they see a pattern of, well, I guess that does that, and that does that, and oh, okay, so that's what it's supposed to do. And then they feel comfortable with it, and they, it makes it easier for them to suspend disbelief, which is what we're really doing. We're acting, we're play acting. We want people to be able to suspend disbelief and accept the fact that whatever I'm using here is something real. That I can go like this and cut through something, you know. It's and the general idea is to get make that easier in any way because the more believable it is, and the less they have to question it, the better that they will feel your costume is because they've already accepted it inside their mind. Um, there are a lot of different types of prop making that you can do. Um, you can work with traditional components, you can work with modern components, you can work with scrap, um, antiques, and you really want to try to figure out what it is that you want to do and what it is about your persona that you want to pull from. For example, these are very popular right now. Um, they're old Bosch and Lom safety glasses. You find them on eBay. They usually go for 150 bucks when you find them. They're, they're pretty expensive items. I picked these up for $2 in a bargain bin in an antique store. These sides were completely destroyed. Um, they originally had plasti plasticine in it. So I took some old theater, theater gels, ripped out the um, old plastic, replaced them, and it gives a, a fairly good look to this. It, I mean, most people would say that this is a steampunk item. Also, it's not very stable. I'm not going to lie. Theater gel is fairly flimsy material. It um, has been set in with the original plastic, which, which was thicker, so it's easy for it to pop out. You have to be kind of delicate with them, but that's okay because when you put them on, people say they look relatively good. You know, they, they look like they belong with the costume. They uh, tie into the purple on the co coat, the purple on the shirt, and nobody needs to know that your device has a bunch of, you know, gobbledygook on the inside that only you can see. And that's perfectly fine. The other things that you can do are work with modern equipment. Um, my bar belt, which I think a lot of you probably you saw me wearing around during the convention, um, this is all factory, off-the-shelf stuff. I did the leather work myself, just took leather, did the punch work, rivet work, did some sewing, um, put it together. Um, and most of this is off-the-shelf stuff that I have to touch up constantly. Don't be afraid to wear your props down and have chipping paint, things like that. It doesn't really matter. It's going to happen. You're going to repaint everything that you have, every two cons anyway. It's, it's just the nature of the beast because you're working with good hard materials like wood and brass and softer materials like plastic. If you can find nice metal parts, that's great, but you won't be able to find off-the-shelf parts very easy like that. These are specimen tubes from a lab company, and I use them to carry around my mixers for my barbell. Um, and to get back to the fact that this is a barbell, I do have a shtick to my character, and I highly recommend that you pick a shtick. 